Hi, my name is Nick, and I'm an analyst here at the RCPC World Finals, and I'll be presenting the solution to problem G, mosaic browsing. In this problem, you're given a mosaic. Here, mosaic is represented as a 2D grid of integers, and you also have a smaller subgrid here, uh, and you want to identify all of the positions in the mosaic where if you take the smaller subgrid and you sort of superimpose it, um, this pattern actually matches up. Uh, the smaller subpattern can have squares which are blank, and if the squares are blank, then any value can be there, but if there's a value filled in, then the values have to match exactly. So in this example here that I've drawn on the script, uh, this pattern can appear in two locations. So there's this top left two by two corner, and then this bottom right two by two corner, because that's the only location where you have twos uh, adjacent to each other on the diagonal like that. So this is a two-dimensional string matching problem. Um, so it might be hard to think about how to reason about this problem in two dimensions. So instead, we can think about the one-dimensional equivalent. So imagine you just have a really long string, and then you have a smaller pattern, and you want to find all the locations where the pattern matches in the string. Uh, if you look at the problem in this way, you'll see that there are basically two conditions in order for the strings to line up. So either the uh, pattern itself is just all wildcards or all zeros, or the pattern is basically equivalent to uh, the actual image string, again, sort of ignoring zeros. Um, so if you express the problem in this way, uh, we can actually convert this into sort of uh, an evaluation problem. Like we want to check to see are either of these expressions uh, correct. Um, so what we can do is we can actually express like i equals p as saying like i minus p is equal to zero or p equals zero. And so this doesn't really seem to help us. Um, what we can do though is we can sort of multiply these expressions and if we multiply these expressions we'll get, we can get the following expression p times i minus p squared and then if you expand this, uh, you get something along the lines of p times i squared minus 2 times p times i, um, or 2 times p squared times i plus p cubed. And so what happens here is we have, we, we know how to compute like the pattern, we know how to compute like the image, and these are just like strings. So if we interpret these as polynomials, what we can actually do is we can compute the product here quickly using fast Fourier transform. Um, so in the one-dimensional variant of this problem, what we've actually done is we've reduced this problem to computing uh, these products. And so these products are computable quickly with fast Fourier transform. Um, but that's the one-dimensional version of the problem. So now the question is, how do you go from the two-dimensional or the one-dimensional version into the two-dimensional version? So in the two-dimensional version, you do something sort of vaguely similar. You take the string, or you take the mosaic here, and you write it in row major order. So for example, we would take this mosaic and we would write it as like two, four, one, three, two, three, two, four, two. And then we have this smaller subgrid but we can't actually write it like strictly in the row major order because we have to sort of compensate for the fact that um, the number of columns may be different. So we actually have to do a little bit of padding here. So we would represent this, for example, as like two, zero, zero, uh, because that's the number of columns. And then we pad it out continuing like that. And then this is the sort of the modified representation for the smaller grid. Uh, once you have these, you compute the fast forward transform, or you use fast forward transform to compute the product uh, as stated here, and then you just check, uh, does this expression here, uh, is it equal to zero um, at each of the possible offsets that you can put this grid in, and that's all you need to do to solve this problem. For more from the ICPC World Finals DACA, follow us at news.icpc.global. And on social media with our hashtag ICPCWFDACA.